Welcome back to Game Points. I'm your host, Matthew Ross. A little under the weather, but we're struggling through. We're here until 7 o'clock tonight. Brandon Lin- London of the Montreal Alouettes is here in studio. He'll bring on a couple of his teammates a little later on here on the show, including Kai Bear and Mike Edom, Mo Khan, Stefano Michella also here, and Jimmy G on the board. That song, of course, by... Anakin Slay, the great hip-hop artist here in Montreal uh, on, uh, of course, the 1994 Expos. And our next guest is very well familiar with them. He is from Toronto. He's a filmmaker and uh, the gentleman behind the Pedro Martinez clip, if you've seen it circulating, uh, we owe it to uh, to this man who interviewed him this week. He is Sean Menard. Hey, Sean, how you doing? I'm doing all right, Matthew. I'm sorry to hear that you're under the weather. I'm trying. I'm trying. But, uh, <laughs> well, first of all, want to thank you very much for uh, for helping us out at uh, Expos Nation and, and facilitating it. I just saw the, uh, the CBS Sports blog uh, for baseball just posted the clip. So it's making the rounds, and uh, we, uh, we certainly uh, thank you for that. Well, it's, it's it's you know that's it's all Pedro. I just I simply asked him if he if he wanted to do something like that, and uh, I mean, listen, the guy loves Expos Nation, and he's still so passionate about his playing days in Montreal. So it was it was nice to to get a lot of that on camera. Now I know a bit of the behind the scenes uh, sort of genesis genesis of how this came about. But a kid in Toronto in his twenties, what's he doing a documentary about the '94 Expos for? <laughs> I've been getting that a lot. It's like you're not even from Montreal, but I mean, you know, I'm I was very well aware of 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 the Expos, uh, you know, growing up, even though I was a Blue Jays fan, sorry. Um, but, you know, they, you know, it just was, it was always a story to me. Um, and I, and I was really young when it, when it happened. Um, and it was, it was something that I never really saw put together um, in, into like a documentary or, or any kind of story really in long format. Um, and I just started to kind of dig deep. And then I was thinking, you know, well, it's 20 years, this might be a good time to, uh, you know, put something together. Um, and I was, to be honest with you, I wasn't even aware that they were bringing Montreal at those exhibition games back at this point. I wasn't aware that, you know, they plan on bringing the 94 team on the field um, as part of the Montreal baseball project. And then it wasn't until I said, you know, if I'm going to be doing this, I need somebody that really knows, uh, you know, this story and, and the Expos team better uh, than a lot of people. So I, I reached out to Jonah Carey and I said, listen, this is what I want to do. Um, do you want to come on board as my executive producer? And, um, you know, obviously he was like, you know, this is, this is probably the most perfect timing because uh, in a couple months the events are happening, you know, his book's coming out. Um, so it really was kind of a, a perfect storm, dare I say, of, uh, <laughs> of events that just kind of occurred. And then I just, uh, before I, you know, I even decided to reach out to anyone, I just I said, I'm just going to start shooting chatting with Sean Menard of the 94 Expos documentary. So you took a lot of footage. You were here in March on the field when the 94 Expos were celebrated. uh, And then you hit a bit of a snag in terms of budgeting or at least in terms of getting some footage to round out the documentary and you turn to Kickstarter. That's exactly right. Yeah, like I said, I I mean, it probably, you know, other, other people will do it differently where they might, you know, find their funding ahead of time. I just went all in. And then realized how expensive Major League Baseball footage can be, and I mean, and that's that's something that it would be disappointing to watch this thing and you only see a little bit of footage or maybe you see photos. But, but for me, I was very adamant on on making sure that uh, this documentary featured a lot of great highlights from back in the day. So exactly right, I, I turned to uh, I turned to Kickstarter as I was out of out of funds, <laughs> and uh, overwhelmed by the amount of support that I got from from doing that campaign. You were looking for 15k. You got something like 22k. Was was that is that anywhere near what you were expecting? No, no. I thought it was going to be uh, me having to uh, you know start begging friends and family to to top it off. Um, you know, I mean, and it's still you know Kickstarter does take you know a, a percentage off that 10 percent, and then you know have to still fill out some rewards and ship out some posters and everything. But it, yeah, it was definitely more than I thought, and it was literally like. The, the best part for me was getting the individual people and the Montreal fans messaging me and, and telling me how, how much it meant to them that I was doing this, um, this project and how much the team means. And, and just, I'll be honest too, Bud Seelig's comments about 
uh, you know, a possible return, you know, or not for, for, for baseball in Montreal helped a lot too. And it was just, um, yeah, it was very, very overwhelming and surprising to see the support I got. Well, one of the uh, one of the rewards, of course, as you mentioned, you know, copies of the movie or, or posters, things like that. I put out, uh, you know, the idea of having a, a fan or two who wants to donate a lot of money to share their memories here in studio during my program. And lo and behold, I'm looking at the page right now. I, I didn't realize it, but you actually had one guy donate and 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 get into that category. So I'm I'm absolutely elated that we were able to help. And you know, if if it's two guys here in studio instead of one fan, I'm more than happy to have that as well. So. Uh, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, it, it was actually um, it was a girl that that donated. And I don't have her name um, here for me, but yeah, so it, she'll be uh, she'll be joining in studio. Very cool. So you, you got a lot of information from these guys. The the Pedro Martinez clip. We all saw the passion, and how he feels for the market. Is that kind of indicative of what you saw from some uh, you know some of the other guys as well? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, without question, they're still. It, it was the most interesting part was to be able to experience them coming back to Olympic Stadium. Uh, myself and my camera crew were the only ones allowed outside of the players and the and, and the former coaches onto the bus um, as they drove up in, into the stadium in March for those exhibition games. And then, I mean, just the feeling being in the tunnel and you know, fifty thousand fans right before the game. Those players, I mean, they talked to me about it afterwards. Actually, my sit down interviews that you'll see in the film. Uh, come right after that game, um, so it's a, it's a, it's about two hours. They, they, they left the game early, but it's essentially about two hours after their introductions. So it's still very fresh, um, you know, the nostalgia for these guys, and to be able to to get them during that time, I think it really makes uh, you know their sound bites and their interviews kind of ring true with with how passionate they still are about um, that season and that team and what could have been and 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 how much they hold in high regard for their Expos fans. Any any favorites, personal favorites, interviews? Well, I'll be honest with you. A surprise is uh, John Wetland actually teared up in the interview. Um, and I don't know if you've if you've met with him or talked with him. He, he's, an, he's an intimidating, strong. <laughs> you know, he had the closer role, and he um, ninety six you know, World that, Series MVP as well. It, it, yeah, it has that tough guy persona, and it's just uh, to have him. And I, and I think it caught him off guard. Um, because it really, I mean, when he talks about it, it was just, you know, a bunch of young guys who didn't know any better, who just wanted to go out and, and, and play baseball and, and have fun doing it. And I think for him, he looks back on it and, and a lot of these guys, they did, they did, you know, get emotional, but Wetland was the, was the one guy I got, I got to tear up, which was, uh, nice to see. Of course, one of the other guys you had a chance to chat with was the manager, Felipe Alou, who spent so many years with the Expos organization and, uh, f- that, Throughout that entire weekend, he had a lot of appearances to do, and, and certainly his back is, is not the greatest right now. But there's a there's a certain aura that that he projects. It feels like you're around greatness when you're chatting with him. Did you get that sense as well? <laughs> without question, without question. And he's just so so loved in in Montreal, and he shares that passion. Um, you know, he married uh, a, a girl from that from that area, and. Um, that's something that's important to me that I want to show in the film is how revered he is to Montreal fans and to these players, the amount of respect they had. Obviously, you know, he was the first, first ever major, major league baseball coach from Dominican. And, um, I just, I mean, that's, that's something that's important to me is I want to build early on is, is the respect and, and why this team was the best team in baseball in 94. A lot of it had to do with, with their manager, Felipe. We're chatting with Sean Menard, the uh, filmmaker behind the 94 Expos documentary coming out in the fall called The Perfect Storm, uh, which you can still see that that phenomenal trailer. If you go to kickstarter.com and you put in The Perfect Storm, you can see some of the footage from from some of those players. And they uh, they were able to raise that, that page anyway, uh, over $22,000 to complete this film. So where are you in the production of the film and the negotiation, I guess, of, of ha- getting it on, on some sort of network? Well... Uh, in terms of negotiations, I have I have my agent that's, that's kind of dealing with that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest with you, my main focus is is in editing right now. And that's exactly what I'm doing, making sure that this thing's the best it can be. And but um, uh, there's interest across the board from from a couple broadcasters in the U.S. and in and in Canada. Um, I will be completely shocked if it doesn't air um, nationally, at least in Canada, in the next in the next couple months. 
Um, but basically what happens is the process is once it's done edited, it gets sent away to Major League Baseball, and they kind of sign off on it just to say that, you know, their brand is, is being shown in the right light. And uh, once that happens, then, uh, you know, official deals can be put in place with broadcasters. Are you worried about, you know, the fact that you're talking about a sensitive subject, which is the strike and the work stoppage of, you know, covering certain angles that, that MLB may not be happy about? No, no. And I've had that discussion with MLB. They understand that, obviously, I mean, this is the first time in Major League Baseball history ever that, they, you know, the season was canceled in terms of the playoffs and, and no World Series. I mean, they understand that I have to, you know, talk about that. It's, I mean, it's, it's, right as it stands right now, it's, it's a half an hour documentary, and, and the goal is to not be political. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of Montreal fans want me to, you know, to talk into some of the other reasons of, of you know, why the team left. Or, but I, the focus is on the 94 team, and, and obviously, you know, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. But, yeah, to answer your question, I'm not, I'm not worried about them signing off of it uh, in the least. SeanMenard.com is the website if you want to get in touch with him, or Sean Menard on Twitter as well. The documentary is called The Perfect Storm. It'll air uh, in the fall at some point, and uh, dare we say some sort of Montreal pre- premiere, as though I haven't been nudging you several weeks in a row? <laughs> yes, I know. I would love to uh, I'd love to, uh, to bring it out there and have some kind of, you know, private premiere i'd love to be able to include some i mean that's the part of it's half an hour but this thing could easily stretch itself out to be an hour Ooh, um, extras i like so, it yeah so i'll be able to you know maybe include some of that for the for the screening but um yeah we'll, we'll we'll chat more and try and get that going for sure all right we're holding you to it sean menard the filmmaker behind the perfect storm 94 expos documentary thanks so much for joining us i appreciate it thanks matthew uh, uh,